This is a city that served as the heart of the Mexican Revolution movement. Everywhere you walk around, you'll see monuments dedicated to the revolution, to independence. Welcome to Puebla. Good morning guys and today we are in the city of Puebla. This is a city full of culture and a lot, a lot of history. But today we're going to walk around the center, we're going to explore what Puebla has to offer and I'm going to share it all with you guys and give you a full guide on how to visit Puebla in a day. We've started off the day here at Paseo Bravo. This is just a really, really long walkway. It goes all the way to this gazebo but it's like a little bit west of the center of Puebla but it's a nice little park it's shaded you've got tons of trees and it's just a beautiful place to start off the morning here in Puebla it's nice it's serene and it definitely gives you a sort of local view into the city So as I told you, this place is called Paseo Bravo, but what I didn't realize is that it's actually named after a guy called Nicolas Bravo. Now who is Nicolas Bravo? Bravo was the president of the Republic of Mexico here in Puebla during the invasion of 1847 when they were fighting against the French. And you have this monument here that sort of details what happens but it's basically a commemoration of Bravo, who he was, what he did for Mexico, and obviously his important role in the Mexican Revolution. As we walk around Puebla, we're gonna see a lot more monuments, a lot more things that are dedicated to the revolution and people that were involved. So let's continue and head on with our tour of Puebla. Next up we've come to is just a few blocks down. This is the Temple of San Marcos. That temple was completed back in the 1600s, which is many, many hundreds of years ago. But honestly, there's nothing much inside the church. The only thing that I think is unique are the tiles. They have these blue and white tiles that are very reminiscent of a European style. Uh, but you know, that's a really, really old church. To me, there's nothing much to it. I've seen way too many churches, but the only unique thing, especially even on the outside, the tiles are very, very colorful and they're very, very still well-preserved. So. The tiles are super, super well preserved both on the outside and the inside. Inside they're like white and blue colored, on the outside they're all different colors like red and yellow. So it's worth a, a little stop when you're here at Puebla. A couple blocks down and we've come to a very interesting site here in Puebla. It's a very important site as well. This is the Mercado Victoria. I would 
see that that's a pretty nice market. You can tell that it was built, you know, in like a French style. For many years, apparently, it was abandoned, but then they sort of renovated it, and now it's sort of turned into like a modern shopping mall kind of area. It's not very traditional. In fact, all the stores in there are like really nice, well kept. They're selling electronics, pretty modern stuff in there. But you can see the original structure itself was like European, pretty old. But it's a nice place to just walk around. Keep in mind that now it's a shopping mall. It's not really a market. So it's, you know, really well cleaned, polished and everything. It's not exactly what you would expect from a Mexican market. So do keep that in mind if you decide to visit that place. Welcome to the next stop. This is the Church of Santo Domingo. Again, just like the other churches in Puebla, that's a really, really old church. I think it was built like 1600s, 1700s, I'm not sure exactly when, but it's a really old church. The inside is quite nice, but honestly, what you really go in there for is not the actual church, but the Capilla del Rosario, which is this little chapel on the left side of the church. When it was built, it was known as the eighth new wonder of the world, and it is stunning. Like. It's just pure gold. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to enter. There's a wedding going on today and I think that even without the wedding, I'm not sure that they're allowing tourists to go in. But that is what you really go for. It is beautiful. The, the adornments are just wonderful. It's all pure gold. It is stunning in there. So the temple is nice, but really what you go for is the Capilla del Rosario because that is truly spectacular. Welcome to our next stop. This is the Museum of the Revolution. That was a very interesting museum. This part of the revolution was talking about the time of Porfiriato. So when they were trying to defeat the Porfiriato back in the early 1900s. And this is actually a family's house. The Serdans used to live here and they were part of the movement to try to get Porfirio Diaz out of power. But at the end of the day, they were killed here. You can see the bullet holes in the house. It's really, really interesting. And there's just so much history in this place, but it's just absolutely fascinating to me how they've managed to preserve that house. The house is well preserved. They've got exhibitions of the entire revolution, but it is a really cool place to visit here in Puebla and it's pretty close to the center. Now, obviously every Mexican town or city has one thing, which is the main central plaza. And we've come to the main central plaza. This is the Zócalo of Puebla. But unfortunately, I can't show you anything because it's completely cut off. I think they're doing some construction work inside. I can see a lot of like wooden scaffolding and everything. So this is the Socalo right behind me, but I can't show you anything because it's completely shut out. I mean, it's like literally all these fences here. I've just caged it all up. So we, we can't go in, but right next to it is a church. So we're gonna go see if we can check out the church. Well, fortunately enough, while the Zócalo and the main square is closed, this is not. Welcome to the Cathedral of Puebla. That has got to be, without a doubt, one of the best churches I've seen in Mexico. I was pretty churched up before I came. I was like, ah, I've seen so many churches. This isn't gonna be anything different. But boy, was I wrong. That is incredible. It is massive on the inside, beautifully decorated. 
And for me, the best part is that dome that they have in the center, the altar, the high altar. That was inspired by the Vatican. It's built in this neoclassical style. You've got these beautiful golden ornaments inside. That is stunning. I, I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that here in Mexico. That altar right there is the most beautiful altar I've seen out of all the churches in Mexico. And I've seen a lot of churches. If you're here in Puebla, the Cathedral of Puebla is an absolute must-see. I didn't think it was going to be that, but after going inside and walking around, I'm just completely blown away by how beautiful that cathedral is. It's absolutely worth it. And if you're here in Puebla, you have got to visit this cathedral. The altar is just absolutely stunning. Literally right across the street. I mean, the cathedral's right there. The exit is there. Right across the street is our next stop. And oh, this is probably one of the main icons here in Puebla. This is Biblioteca Palafoxian. La Biblioteca Palafoxiana is easily one of the must-sees here in Puebla. It was originally built by a guy called Palafox, and basically he said that he wanted this library to be built on one condition, that it wasn't excluded only to the clergy, but everybody, all the lay people could have access to this library as well, which makes that library the first ever public library in all of Latin America, which is really, really cool. When you walk in, you can just see how old that library is. All the books are from like the 1700s, 1600s. It's a really, really, really old library. You can see the tables and the chairs. They're old, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. And like I said, the history behind it is absolutely amazing. It's the first public library in Latin America. It's a really cool place. And the security guard actually is really, really nice there. She let me film whatever I wanted to. But it's just a really, really good place to visit. You can see how they organize all the books and just the structure of the library is absolutely incredible. And another few blocks down, we've come to this main street that is just absolutely stunning with tons of little shops and during the day it becomes a little market. This is Calle de los Sapos or the Street of the Frogs. It's a really popular street during the day. You've got tons of little arts and craft stalls selling all types of things, jewelry, usually for tourists. We're talking about clothes, we're talking about, you know, souvenirs mostly, but it is an absolutely just Please, there's so many people here. I came here yesterday at like 6 p.m. There was nobody here. So if you're here for the environment, for the lively, you know, atmosphere, for the market, then come during the day. But if you just want to see the buildings, the beautiful sort of atmosphere, then come here during the evening time when everybody's gone because it's a completely different vibe. But this vibe is nice. If you're looking for a souvenir in Puebla, this is the place to buy it from. What's interesting about this place is that it's called the Street of the Frogs because a long time ago when irrigation wasn't that good, when this place flooded or you know during the rainy season when there would be a lot of rain, the frogs would come out and this street would just be packed with frogs. So that's how this place is called the Street of the Frogs. On the northeast side of Puebla is one of the most beautiful areas of the town. We're currently at one of the first stops here. This is the Fort of Loreto. But because of the pandemic, a lot of the things here are going to be closed. This fort is one of those attractions that are closed because of the pandemic. But this view behind me is absolutely incredible. We're going to stay here for sunset later, but there's other things to do around this hill. So we're going to go take a walk around and see what there is. I'm hoping something is open, but it's also pretty late in the day. And also with the pandemic, it might be a little bit hard. 
but I'll see what there is to do and I'll show you guys around. This is a really historical spot because this was where the Battle of Puebla took place. If you guys know Cinco de Mayo is actually not Mexico's Independence Day, it's actually the day that the Mexicans won the Battle of Puebla right here on this hill. So a lot of the things around here are related to Cinco de Mayo against the French, but I'm not very sure if anything's open. So let's go ahead and see what there is to do. Just a, literally a five minute walk away is this monument right here. This is the monument to Cinco de Mayo and it's in the shape of the Mexican flag. You've got red, white, and green. You've got a list of many of the main sort of commanders that were in the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862. And it's a beautiful place. I mean, the flag is really, really well preserved. And it gave, basically tells you the number of people who, I think they died, I think 5,452. I'm not sure if that's the number of people who participated or the number of people who died, but it is a monument to the Cinco de Mayo celebration that we have today and the battle that was in 1862. Well, we've made it to the central area where all the museums and the things are, and literally everything's closed. So first, behind me right there, that's the Regional Museum of Puebla, that's closed. Right there is the auditorium, that's obviously closed. Over there is the Museum of Evolution, which is also closed. Over there is the Planetarium of Puebla, which is also closed. So literally everything is closed up here. But the one thing that you can do if you're interested here in Puebla is to take the cable car. There is a cable car system here in Puebla. I'm not sure how much it costs, but you can also walk up, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But it is an option if you want to get up here instead of walking all the way up. A cable car is definitely the easier way to get up to this sort of hill here in Puebla. Well, we've made it all the way to the end of the hill. You can see once you go down, that's just the bottom. That's, that's the city there. So there's nothing more there. But this right behind me is another fort. This is the Fort of Guadalupe. But just like the previous fort, it's also closed. But everything around here has something to do with Cinco de Mayo. So if you saw earlier, there was a monument to the revolution. That was for Cinco de Mayo. There's a lot of monuments for Cinco de Mayo. But this place, it's just a nice place that locals come to hang out, you know, on an evening stroll. It's really romantic. You can see there's a bunch of these like keychains here. So a lot of couples come here and sort of lock it in. But there's a lot of viewpoints around here, a ton of viewpoints. And you can definitely find one to yourself because it's such a large area with not that many people. It's starting to rain, but we're gonna try and see how long we can stay here until the sun actually sets. Hopefully, the rain won't come anytime soon. Just a five minute walk later, we've come back to the viewpoint. That view of Puebla is absolutely amazing. And we're gonna stay here for a bit. Hopefully, the rain doesn't get stronger. The sun has not set yet, but it's pretty much there. And with these dark clouds behind me, I don't think we're actually gonna get to see a sunset. But it's been another amazing day here in Puebla. I'm ending the video here because what I didn't realize is that it gets pretty cold when the sun is hidden away. And I didn't bring my sweater, so I am freezing. I'm ready to go back into the centro and get a sweater because it is just cold. But that's gonna be all for this video here in Puebla. This is a beautiful city. It's so, so, so historical. There's so many things to do. I mean, for me, one of my favorites is obviously the library. The Cathedral of Puebla is just mind blowing. It was way better than I would expect. And unfortunately, because so many of the museums are closed, we didn't really get a full experience of Puebla. But I've listed the museums right here and I hope you, when you come to Puebla, you'll have a chance to visit them because they seem absolutely cool. But yeah, Puebla is an amazing city and I cannot wait to continue exploring it in the upcoming videos. 
All right, it's getting really, really cold. I am ready to go back, so I'm gonna end the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more food and travel videos, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye from Puebla, and I'll see you guys on the next one.